the problem with the preaching system on Sunday morning, as many people have complained about, really comes down to three things that happen at the same time. If a Christian fellowship has all three of these things, they're going to have big, big problems. If they drop any one of these three things and keep the other two, then everything is honky-dory and fine. Many of the problems, the objections, the uh, emotional abuse, the, the complaint and criticism about Christianity, many of these problems come from having all three of these things present at the same time. And n these three things all happened in the Bible, but never at the same time. And from what I've seen, um, I'm, I'm, I, this is an old opinion I've had. I'm just starting to go through pagan Christianity, and it's verifying every opinion I've always ever had. It's not really teaching me anything, but it is very therapeutic to see that other people have been thinking exactly the same thing that I've been thinking. Watchman Nee came to the same conclusion in China about the American church. We're talking years ago. It's getting close to 100 years. So these three things... You have a local Christian fellowship. This is just the normal, what people call a congregation or a, the church or a local church. It's the Christian fellowship. Paul said, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Christians have to talk to each other. And this is a local regular meeting, often called a local church or something like that. It's a local church. That's good and important. They hire a pastor. That's fine. Uh, having having a shepherd that you pay money to, to to help teach people and look after people that's a great wonderful thing that that's awesome so local Christians have their fellowship and they hire a pastor that's 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 great then that pastor gives at their local fellowship teaching with the pastor that they pay that pastor gives a long monologue every week of 40 minutes to an hour usually could be more could be less it's a monologue he talks you don't uh, there's a polite way to say it there's an impolite way to say it it's a monologue it's a lecture it's it's like class it's 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 a regular speech you don't talk you be quiet maybe you take notes and he gives his presentation shows his videos gives his PowerPoint gives his talk uh, whatever. He's got the microphone and you don't. It's a monologue. It's one person talking for an hour or 40 minutes. It's a, it's a typical uh, college or high school class session amount of time. And that's fine. One person talking for an hour, giving a lecture or a sermon or preaching is fine. That's great. In Christian fellowship, that's great. In conference, that's where a lot of Christians get together more than usual at not a normal, regular every week meeting time. Lots of Christians get together once in a great while. That's that's not local fellowship. That's not church. That's conference. That's, that, that, that's great to have someone give a lecture. But when you have the local regular weekly church, local church fellowship paying their their, the, the salary, the full income for that man to give a monologue where only he talks and nobody else does, now these three things come together and it's like an unholy marriage. It's terrible. It creates division in the church. It's a big, huge problem. Any one of those has to go. Now, I've come to some conclusions about why I think that's a problem. I've explained that in my books. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more in the next video so I don't bore you here. But any of these three things could go. Maybe that, that man, that pastor, maybe he can decide to tell his congregation, you know what, we're not going to be a congregation anymore. You can do your local Christian fellowship somewhere else. We're going to call ourselves a school. We're going to keep meeting at the same time. We're going to keep doing the same things. But we're not going to. We're going to stop calling ourselves a church. We're going to call it a school. Do your church other your regular Christian fellowship some other time, and we're going to keep exactly the same thing going. Keep giving us money. Keep showing up at the same time. But we're not church. We're parachurch. Okay. Now it's no longer local church. That could fix it. Another way to fix it is that they don't pay that pastor. That that pastor he their local church. He keeps giving a one week monologue, but uh, they don't pay him. He has a day job. He does tent making like Paul and Jesus did, uh, or he has a business. He pays his own way. Uh, that's and then then everything else is fine. They're not paying his his full salary, or they're not paying him for for his services. Option three: It's not a monologue. Maybe it could become a Q and A. It could become an open microphone. 
uh, maybe he's going to be coaching other people in, in talking. Maybe he'll say, okay, we've got an hour. We've got uh, 12 people who want to talk. Everyone gets five minutes. And then afterwards, he's got a Sunday school class where he teaches them how to say stuff. And I've seen in, in the Watchman Knee Christian fellowships, they're amazing. You got lots and lots of amazing preachers because everybody gets a, a chance to, to prepare a little short lesson and give a little speech to their group of maybe 20 people uh, every week. And because of that, they do their homework. They learn how to make their point very, very quickly. They don't get long winded. They'll, they'll pack what might take a lot of preachers 20 minutes to say, and they'll pack it into three minutes. And they really learn how to get to the point because they all get a chance at it. That that pastor is a very well-trained person. He knows his Bible. He should be coaching other people in how to preach. He shouldn't be just showing people how to be quiet and watch it done correctly without learning. He should be coaching them. So uh, having open microphone or having a chance to get some coaching outside of the fellowship, maybe Sunday class, you know, Sunday school or a separate class another time, um, maybe, maybe that that pastor uh, somehow or another he opens it up so that more people can talk in the meeting it's not a monologue that's a third way to fix it so you've got these three problems you've got a local church and you have a paid pastor and he's giving a monologue once all those three come together that's a big big huge problem I'm gonna explain why I think so in the next video but there's three easy ways to fix it one uh, call yourself not a local church. Say your parachurch. Get your Christian fellowship somewhere else, but keep coming to the same thing. Option two, the pastor gets a job. It's called tent making. Widely, widely practiced throughout many parts of the world and through the New Testament. And then third, um, just no more monologue, which also, I mean, they didn't do monologue in the New Testament. Uh, you know, Jesus had paid his own way, and, and a lot of times it was discussion. People would ask him questions constantly. It was, it was a dialogue a lot of the times. A Sermon on the Mount, well, okay, Jesus gave a monologue, but that wasn't the weekly fellowship. That was conference. And, uh, by the way, remember, Jesus was a, a carpenter. He had, he had made his own money. So um, we don't see this local church regular meeting paying the pastor to give a monologue every week anywhere in the New Testament. Even, even, even you know, Peter. Peter was, Peter was paid by the church uh, in the New Testament. But he wasn't necessarily giving weekly monologues, uh, you know, every single week at the local church fellowship. In the New Testament, ecclesia was what we saw in the book of Acts when Paul goes to Ephesus, and it was this highly interactive group. Uh, Christian fellowship, the weekly Christian fellowship, was highly interactive in the New Testament, much more like the House of Lords in England. When an American watches the House of Lords in England, they kind of ask, well, what is this? They're all yelling. Well, it's interactive in England. We don't need to be boring all the time. So yeah, the third way to fix it is to be a little bit more interactive. In the next video, I'm going to tell you the problem with all three of these things happening at the same time and why we need to let go with at least one of them. After that, I'm going to explain a very simple way uh, to use technology and a website and ebooks to make it much more able and easy to, to, to let any of these things go.